I'm Leslie Sibillic, Senior Curator at the Senator John Hines History Center. And I'm here today during Women's History Month to talk to you about a few women who were really important for the story of World War II in Pittsburgh. Women with names like Anne and Vera Zerzevic and Mrs. Robert Bessie McCarroll. And you might be thinking, well, I've never heard of those people before. And you'd be right, they're not famous, but they're all women who worked in area defense plants. In fact, they all worked at one place during World War II. You know, March 21st is National Rosie the Riveter Day. It's a day set aside to acknowledge the contributions of all of these women who participated with the defense industries during the war. In, in December 2020, you might have heard, or I know there are a lot of headlines right now, so maybe you missed it, but Congress actually passed a bill authorizing for a National Rosie the Riveter Congressional Gold Medal also acknowledging the contributions of these women and really acknowledging the inspiration they've given to future generations. Now, of course, the character of Rosie the Riveter started first as someone in a pop song in 1942 and has become perhaps even more famous today as the character we see on the wonderful Westinghouse poster, you know, the we can do it woman. But at the time, some women would have said, you know, we weren't all Riveters. And there was another character. She didn't get as much play, but her name was Winnie the Welder. And for Pittsburgh, welding is really an important part of the story. In fact, women welders here during the war were making some of the biggest contributions to the war effort. And I mean that literally. They were making LSTs, landing ship tank, those huge transport vessels that took men and equipment overseas. And they were being made at Dervaux and American Bridge. We have two wonderful photos in our collection that show some of these women and we can put names to them. One image shows three young women standing together and if you looked at the image, you'd think, well, I, they kind of look related and they were, they were sisters. Anne, Julie, and Vera or V. Zerzevic. They were three out of six sisters. Their parents were Serbian immigrants and their story really echoes part of the experience of many women who worked at a place like Dravo. Vera or V, the oldest, got a job first. She had been working as a maid, that is domestic service, which was one of the occupations open to women. And she heard that Dravo in late 1942 was actually opening a welding class for women and hiring. So she signed on. It was a new experience. It offered more pay. Her sisters followed. And that wasn't unusual, that you would have one family member go and others would join them. And some of these women actually commuted two hours to get to that job and two hours home. So we can, we can appreciate why they might have wanted friends or family members there. And it's also something that's easy for us to forget that many of these women had other members of their family, um, their husband, a brother, a son, who was already serving overseas. In fact, there were multiple examples of women at Dravot who had lost a husband in the war and the newspapers profiled them saying, you know, in spite of my grief, I'm continuing to come to work because I want to participate in the war effort. A story that's similar to that, not quite so extreme, is that of Mrs. Bessie McCarroll. We know who she was and we have a photo of her from the Dravot collection showing her and another woman actually working on an LST. And Bessie's the one where she has her helmet put back and you can actually see her face. And it was part of a spread, a photo spread, in the Pittsburgh Sun-Telegraph newspaper on June 2nd, 1944. And catch that date, June 2nd, 1944, just days before the D-Day invasion. And a reporter came to different industries in Pittsburgh and they were asking these women, you know, when you hear the news of a European invasion, because everybody knew something was coming, they just didn't know when. And so it's difficult to imagine this today, but the reporter goes around saying, well, if, if you hear the news of the invasion, what, do you, what will you do? Will you go home? Will you collapse in hysteria? And Mrs. Bessie McCarroll, besides the fact that I'm sure she was rolling her eyes thinking, are you kidding me? Said, heck no, we're not going home. I'll be right here staying on the job at Dravot because my belief is the harder I work, the sooner my husband comes home. And that was the attitude of many of these women. They were mixing a combination of pragmatism, uh, you could make more money, with true patriotism, doing what they could do for the war effort. And so on March 21st, give a thought to Bessie McCarroll and Anne and Vera Zerzevic and all the other women who participated in World War II industries in this area and salute them and say thank you. She's the 
part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory, frozen. The riveter keeps a sharp lookout for sabotage. Sitting up there on the fuselage, that little river do more than a river do frozen.